And first up, I want to talk about quantum mechanics. So let's talk about the Yang Mills existence and mass gap. So I already kind of gave the small introduction about about the Yang Mills theory and the idea behind Yang Mills existence and mass gap. Let's go for it. So there's something very commonly known what we or at least as I said what's used to describe quantum mechanics as the Yang Mills theory. Now this theory is specifically used in a field of quantum mechanics known as quantum chromodynamics. What is quantum chromodynamics you might ask? So it sounds weird. Chromo might be like, "Ah, oh, it doesn't mean something with color." You are correct. So interestingly <laughs> enough, I know it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Thanks, Ray. <laughs> this this actually does it, but I guess I guess this is what they just called it. Scientists when they when they I guess not figured out, but when they started to notice that there is this force that binds things smaller than protons together. Now, what I'm talking about are these subatomic fundamental particles known as quarks. So quarks are bounded to other quarks by something known as the strong nuclear force, right? And this is known as the color force. I don't know why though. Like where does color come from? I I'm not too sure. No but idea. But anyway, this is where quantum chromodynamics comes in and kind of relates this strong nuclear force to what's what they call the color force. And the idea of Yang Mills's theory is to uh not only predict but also it's basically a theory of quantum mechanics that shows you how the strong nuclear force and the weak nuclear force how all of them interact together with these particles. Now here's the interesting thing. Now here's the mass gap part, right? Because a big part of this problem, the Yang Mills existence and mass gap is the mass gap part. So there are two major not only major streams of quantum mechanics there's quantum electrodynamics and then as i stated there's quantum chromodynamics i don't believe there are others i'm not entirely sure but quantum electrodynamics deals with what oh, deals with photons those we know are massless quantum electrodynamics also deals primarily with gluons a little bit and these gluons i know they're all just foreign words these gluons are the particles that carry the strong nuclear force. And wow, that's crazy. So the idea behind this yang, behind this theory is forgetting photons and gluons because those are the massless particles, right? Forgetting those. If we're relating the strong nuclear force, right? The strong nuclear force is in almost every single you know, subatomic particle, like a proton, a neutron, not an electron, but almost all particles contain the strong nuclear force, right? Is it is the strong nuclear force also what keeps protons and neutrons together? Like in the like in a in a nucleon? In the nucleus, um, yeah. I think because see, electrostatic. I thought, that's, I thought that's what the strong force was. No, primarily the strong because see, this is a big this is okay. Little sidetrack, but. A lot of people think, you know, the Higgs boson gives particles mass, right? And that's kind of a common theory. That's actually not very true because the Higgs boson gives a particle only like 10% of its mass. The rest, 90%, comes from the energy of the strong nuclear force. So the strong nuclear force has so much energy, remember energy and mass are equivalent, that that basically translates into the mass of the particle. So the majority of the mass of any particle comes from the strong nuclear force right i'm not i'm not entirely sure because i'm thinking it wouldn't really work with the electrostatic force right because a neutron is neutral so they wouldn't really attract i'm assuming it might be with the glue on. we're not again big disclaimer here <laughs> not too sure about how they're together but uh, but again strong nuclear force primarily with these quarks inside of these subatomic particles so we should get a uh, we should get a nuclear physicist. We really should on the podcast. <laughs> to be honest, next time we have like an interview or like a guest that has any knowledge on this stuff, I think we can definitely go into a very interesting conversation. For sure. This particular sure. problem out of the seven, I think, is really interesting because it's I think it's the only one on quantum mechanics, and it's the one that, as I said, it works. We use it. It's just that we don't know why it works. 
So let me again uh, continue to explain. So the idea is, again, there is a zero level energy state, which is more commonly known as the vacuum, right? There's a zero energy. A, an idea of this theory, another way to re rephrase it instead of that mass gap in a little more complicated way, is that any state of any particle that is non-zero, like a non-vacuum state of any particle or of any system, must the, like the energy of that system must be greater than the energy in a vacuum plus some constant. Now you must be like, okay, well that's kind of obvious because the, the vacuum state will obviously be less than some higher energy state, right? That's the entire definition of a higher energy state, that it has more energy. The, th the interesting part is that there are a few particles where their energy is not high enough. So even though their first, their first energy level is higher than the vacuum state, their mass, the mass difference between the zero state and the first state is arbitrarily small. And if this occurs, and this is not finitely measurable, then there is kind of like a problem with this theory. So the mass gap basically states that there is in fact a gap in the mass between the zero energy level and the first energy level. So a system in the zero energy level will have less mass than a system in a higher energy level. Obviously, I'm breaking it down to the simplest possible words. It's a lot more complicated than this, but this is kind of like a way to, I guess, kind of understand it in a, in a simple way. You know, because mass gap doesn't like, it just sounds like, okay, there's a difference in mass, but that is actually very, very fundamental to quantum mechanics because there are a lot of particles that have some mass that are traveling, you know, at the speed of light or near the speed of light. And people are wondering, well, is this mass arbitrarily small or can we measure it? That's the whole question, right? So again, we use this on a daily basis, well, not Parker and I, but scientists <laughs> use this on a daily basis in quantum chromodynamics. It's a very popular theory. I think we should probably link all the, I guess, the Wikipedia articles or whatever articles down well, in the description because it's actually, a very the, interesting the official, read. It's a very interesting read. The official description of the problems are on claymath.org, which is that the is, official mm -hmm. website for uh, the Clay Maths Institute, where they probably do the have... Like yeah. the, the, they have the official description as well as the status of the problems right now and also related links to each problem like, like lectures or explanations or whatever, as well as if you want to try to solve it, they have the rules mm -hmm. for solving this. So you can't just write anything on a piece of paper and say, this is in fact a solution mm -hmm. to the millennium problem they do have rules which, yeah th there yeah, are you certain can... you know like ways to solve it and there are certain things that they are in fact looking for because remember all of these problems that we're talking about today like they they do not have like again the point isn't the money i think that's a very in uh, like important point the point is breaking breaking what we know about science because if, if we can solve something like the Yang-Mills mass gap problem, it would revolutionize how we think about quantum mechanics. Again, it's mm -hmm. not going to change your life. It's not going to change my life. But it will change how science progresses. And I think that is, mm -hmm. I guess, I mean, that's, 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 what the, that's what our podcast is trying to do, right? Progress science. 